Okay guys, welcome back. We've got the um, 24 together. Um, it's been a little while since I've dragged it out. The weather's been absolutely horrendous. So, but we're going to do a few videos while I've got it out, trying to um, pass some time. Um, this one's going to be on um, the power draw, power usage of this um, this scope. It's a bit of a unit, as you can see. It's it's very big. It's quite heavy, and you would expect it to use a lot of power. Um, as uh, some of you may have seen, I was on the um, actual astronomy podcast, had a good chat with the guys there, and thanks for them for uh, having me on. But in that, towards the end, we discussed, I had a, um, a trip planned away going up to um, uh, Armidale, which is uh, on the outskirts of Armidale. It's a border one, two zone, and at a thousand metres of altitude. So it was gonna be quite, um, uh, quite a good experience. But unfortunately, I should have just kept my mouth shut because it's been raining for the last two and a half weeks. So that's gone, done and dusted, didn't go anywhere. Anyway, on the planning side of that, we had to work out because we'd be down in the back of a um, like a 10 acre paddock. And um, it's beneficial to have your own power supply rather than running hundreds of metres of, of cords up to the house. But um, so... I had to um, do a bit of deep diving on this and try and work out how much power it would draw and then work out the usage over the period of a night and then go from there and pick a power supply. Um, already got the power supply, I ended up with a um, Blue Eddy AC70 which is a 768 watt hour unit um, and as you'll see it's overkill but it's also to recharge your laptop um, while you're going and because they've got the most significant power draw out of everything you're going to use out there on the night so um, I spoke to Tong at Hubble Optics and um, he basically gave me a very nice surprise so with all the um, with all the motors the stepper motors and and the the unit itself the brain of the operation um, it is supremely efficient for what is such a big big scope so he um, gave me the information that DC 12 volts it's got a 2 amp circuit breaker so if you work out your watt hours from that it's basically your 12 times 2 is your watt hours so maximum this scope will draw is 24 watt hours and that's when it's slewing back and forth um, it's actually tracking now and it really is uh, negligible usage. So on the AC, the, um, the biggest part of the power draw on the AC unit is the block turning AC power into DC, and it's very wasteful. It um, then feeds it into the unit down there, the brains. Um, and from what I've seen, because I've plugged it in through AC and DC on there, AC draws three times the power um, in usage that the, um, the DC draws. So it's really quite good. So I've got a DC lead and everything coming that I've made up for a extended length. So it's not going to get twisted or turned or anything like that. But um, when I had the, um, the power bank at 50%, it was telling me that drawing a DC, so that's about 300... 380 watt hours because it's a 768 watt hour unit so 380 watt hours was 50 percent and it was telling me in dc that was going to last 99.7 um, hours of usage just tracking the night sky so that is quite amazing really um, i'll put some video up here of the ac and dc and as you can see ac was using almost three times that it was telling me that it was going to be low 30s for hour, uh, hours of power left in the unit at 50%. That's still 30 hours. That's, that's still quite amazing, which means you can go day and night. But um, super pleased with that, that something this size um, in DC when tracking is drawing less than 3 watt hours, or basically drawing 3 watt hours. Um, in AC, it's drawing a bit under 10. 
and you can see it there cycling. I've got a GoPro and it was just filming the um, um, the screen. And when it's plugged in AC, it's far less consistent and accurate was what it shows you on the screen. It'll just cycle up 15 watt hours every now and again. But um, with the DC draw, yeah, it was really, really impressive. So it's giving you something to the tune of three to four watt hours, which is quite amazing again, I said, for this scope. So very, very pleasing with that. Um, it's going to be a few more things. We might do a collimation run. Um, we'll also do um, what I've learned over the last year using this scope, fine tuning, me learning a new um, um, scope. I've got some really nice images. The weather's been pretty crap this last year, but also they could have been better. Um, uh, it's good now that we're understanding some of the, the more, the finer points, um, collimation, the thermals, um, I had the deck built outside that some of you may have seen I've, I've, I've got there and didn't really work it out before there was a resonance on the deck when it was when it was going north um, from east to west there's a resonance and you can't see it through the eyepiece or something like that but when you're at nine and a half thousand millimeters of focal length um, you can definitely see it so I might dig up some video of that but anyway that's about it. Um, bottom line, power consumption, 24 inch scope. Tracking goes up to about eight watt hours when you're slowing to a target. Tracking's probably three to four watt hours in DC. And in AC, up to 20 watt hours when slowing to a target at the maximum speed. And looks like something to the tune of maybe nine watt hours for RUM. Um, um, tracking in AC as I said most of it's used up in the brick itself so really really amazing that you've got those small LED lights that are usually all nine watt hours that's the maximum this thing will, will use um, in power draw so really really happy with that all right we'll go again and uh, another video soon bye for now